All right. Um, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, O365A. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be speaking about the coexistence, coexistence modes of Skype for Business and Teams. So uh, I'm going to lead us out. Um, essentially, uh, the team and I are going to talk about the five uh, major coexistent mode options. Um, Islands mode, uh, Skype for Business with Teams collaboration only mode. Skype for Business with Teams Collaboration and Meetings mode, uh, Teams Only mode, and Skype for Business Only mode. Um, so, Islands mode. So, this is essentially the default mode when uh, you're deploying um, the Skype for Business and Teams interop. And what this essentially means is that the end user on the client side can have both the Skype for Business and Teams client running um, in parallel with each other. So they can still continue to take phone calls in Skype for Business, um, IM, chat, conduct meetings, so on and so forth there. And at the same time, uh, do the same functionality within the Teams perspective. So they can chat with Teams people um, or users that are migrated to Teams or, or, or using the islands mode, I should say. Um, additionally, <clears throat> they can uh, host Skype for Business, uh, sorry, Teams meetings within Teams, and then also collaborate within Teams uh, in a team and channels and so on. Um, there is interop between the two applications themselves. So you, if you're using Teams, you can communicate with a Skype for Business user, um, and then vice versa. If, if you're a Skype for Business user, you can then collaborate with a or uh, instant messenger user in Teams. The next mode. Uh, Skype, for, uh, Skype for Business with Teams collaboration only mode. So what this means is that, um, you know, this is really the most undisruptive uh, mode so that you can sort of dip your toe in the water and start having your users utilize Teams. And it, what it provides you is the ability to still utilize all the functionality within Skype for Business. So I am chat, um, calling, peer-to-peer -peer calling, meetings uh, and such. Um, but you can still use Teams, install Teams on the desktop, but only use Teams to be able to collaborate within a team in itself and a channel and their, you know, the threaded conversations and the persistent chat. So the, um, the peer to peer chat or the, um, scheduling of meetings capabilities within Teams will be disabled if you're in this particular mode. So, um, I'm going to pass it on uh, to Dino. Yeah, thanks. So. Skype for Business with Teams collaboration and meetings picks up um, where the last mode left off. And so this this mode is really great for larger orgs with Skype for Business on-prem, for example, with a big dependency on uh, enterprise voice that may not yet uh, be ready to make that uh, full leap to, to Teams. So this, this mode might be a good consideration for them. So the, the benefit is, um, is that um, it allows you to take advantage of the new uh, great new meeting experiences and teams while continuing to use the Skype for Business client as their primary voice client. So this way users can experience the great quality and the new capabilities such as transcription and translation and the recordings that, you know, we're doing in teams and of course, uh, support for meetings and browsers. Um, users assigned this policy would use teams, uh, for threaded conversations now. Um, but they would start then also start using Teams to schedule and conduct um, their meetings in now. So private chats, voice, video calling uh, would all remain in Skype for Business. So once again, this, this mode allows um, for the, all the benefits of team meetings, uh, along with all the new recording capabilities, but uh, all your enterprise voice calling features would still remain in the uh, Skype for Business client. So um, using Teams for collaborations and meetings while retaining Skype for Business for chat and calling might be useful for users in Skype for Business uh, on-prem deployments once again and uh, that have enterprise voice who are likely going to take some time to upgrade to Teams or might, might even stay um, in an on-prem deployment for the foreseeable future for a number of reasons. Um, users or orgs that uh, don't leverage enterprise voice or Skype for Business, Skype for Business, should likely consider upgrading directly uh, to Teams, as Mike will uh, talk about next. And with that, I'll pass it over to Mike. Yeah, so I'm covering the, the Skype for Business only mode and the Teams only mode. So if you look at the Skype for Business only mode, it's, it's a lot easier to think of, but it's basically 
your your chats and your callings are all done in Skype for Business. You're not really using Teams for anything. You're not using Teams for the teams. You're not using it for channels. Uh, this mode is a little interesting because currently Microsoft doesn't allow the ability to disable any Teams modalities. So as an admin, you would actually have to go in and just remove the Teams license to prevent those users or that, that organization from actually using the Teams client. Uh, but you can use Skype for Business only mode and have the Teams client installed, and you just use that client to join at, at maybe a scheduled Teams meeting, uh, but you would join as an anonymous user. Microsoft is saying that in the future we should have controls to turn off and on uh, certain modalities within a Teams client, but at that time it's, it's not available. The Teams only mode is a little bit interesting in the aspect that uh, this is for when your organization is completely ready or if maybe you have groups of users that just want to use Teams solely for their communication and collaboration. Uh, it, it, what, what's interesting is when you sign into the Skype for Business client, if it's installed on one of these users' PCs, uh, the policy will actually turn that UI into a shell where the only real controls in that Skype for Business client is the, the ability to click on a, a button to launch the Teams client. Uh, everything else from the address book to being able to do IMs, presence, uh, calling, and even meetings uh, are removed from the UI. Uh, it gets a little bit interesting when you are a person that signs into multiple tenants because if, you're, uh, if your client is auto-signing into uh, an account that has this policy applied, you're kind of fighting against the client because the client's removing the UI, so you have to like cancel the sign-in so that you can switch to a different tenant so that you get the full UI. So just know that you know it is a disabled UI. You don't get the ability to sign out or sign in in it. You have to exit out and relaunch. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, that you can still use that client to join a Skype for Business meeting. So it'll be sort of like using the web app, but you have a full desktop client. But other than that, the, the client really isn't going to do much other than be a launcher for Teams. Cool. And guys, what's, uh, what's the default mode um, if you don't do anything? So right now it's islands. Yeah, islands mode. Okay, cool. Well, I was just in the new uh, converged Microsoft Teams and Skype for Business Admin Center, looking at how to how to set all this. And uh, word of caution for for our viewers: it is a, an area that's in flux. It's rapidly evolving and rolling out to various tenants. So you may see different things based on what what tenant you're in. But you can essentially go into the new converged um, admin center, and you can set these modes per user or have a, a tenant global default. And um, you'll quickly, like many, with many things in Office 365, realize that you, you can't set these by bulk yet in the admin portal. So uh, you will might want to turn to PowerShell. And if there are some PowerShell uh, commandlets to, to control these things. Uh, the good thing is these commandlets exist in the Skype for Business online PowerShell module, the one that ships today. Um, and, of course, that, uh, that PowerShell module works by actually downloading the commandlets to a local session um, so the, the team's commandlets can just show up in your Skype for Business PowerShell uh, session. Um, so today there's, uh, there's primarily two commandlets to control this coexistence and interop uh, modes with uh, Skype for Business Online. And there's a, a get and set team's interop policy and there's a get and set uh, team's upgrade policy. And the, uh, the interop policy is being replaced by the team's upgrade policy. So if you're, if you're starting fresh, just, uh, uh, start with the team's upgrade policy. And what the team's upgrade policy, what that commandlet does is it primarily controls three things. Um, first it controls the client behavior. So that's where, uh, where incoming calls and chats are routed. And then also uh, which app is used, either Teams or Skype for Business, when um, a call or a chat is initiated. Um, and that can be assigned, again, to a user or to a tenant global uh, scope. And it also is used to uh, trigger notifications uh, for Skype for Business users that they're go going to be upgraded. Uh, so there's a lot of settings in there to, uh, to control how and when the upgrade notification uh, shows up for your Skype for Business users. So lots of knobs and controls to uh, to play with, and uh, allows you to sort of fine tune your uh, your upgrade coexistence experience. Um, again, this area is in flux though, so uh, 
keep checking those commandlets in the uh, and also the the new convergence admin center. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the the big thing that's not really addressed in all these modes and policies is existing meetings. And I think that's the thing that businesses have to think about. You know, any meetings that were booked, you know, when they were using Skype for business and you flip those users to Teams, you know, those meetings aren't going to go and retroactively upgrade the content to be the new format. So uh, you have to think about that. You know, you could have a Teams-only user now, uh, but then having to fire off the, the Skype for Business web app to join meetings that they booked prior to they were Teams-only mode. So I was hoping Microsoft would leverage, you know, their, their meeting migration service, maybe retool that to kick that off, that's a service that today rebooks meetings that were done on Skype for Business on premises, and then when that user is moved via hybrid to online, uh, their meetings would update with that online information. Uh, I don't see any indication of that right now being applied to all these scenarios. Yeah, I think the you know to that point, I think the giving the ability to still join meetings when you're in Teams only mode. So if you previously booked Skype for Business meetings, you can still join and host those meetings uh, from the you know the the web app per se client, right? The full client, the, the, I guess the modified version of the Skype client. So <clears throat> as you transition your um, your meetings, if you have ones there, that you know I guess based on each user as they um, uh, have their meetings, they can modify their existing meetings and, and sort of update them sort of on the fly. But yeah, I mean, it's a good point. You know, it'd be nice to have something that would just go and modify everything. Um, but I guess, you know, to still have that ability to join them is, is, is good as well. Uh, so what, uh, I mean, like what modes do you guys feel that uh, sort of most customers would be utilizing today? And like what would be the most sort of I guess, powerful one uh, to go through. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I've been working with uh, a few larger customers and, and certainly the, the collab and meetings mode that I talked about would be um, a great place to start. Um, just, you know, for the reasons we talked about and, and um, you know, I, I think, I think the, the meeting experience in teams will be the most compelling reason for people to start migrating off, off Skype for business. It's, you know, it's just a, a breath of new life and in, into the the whole product, and and uh, so I think that mode likely makes the most sense. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, but uh, I believe that that's probably where it's 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 going to head. I, I think it'll head there, but um, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, when you go in that mode, your meetings will no longer be in Skype for Business, right? It's you're essentially you're choosing Teams for your meeting experience for for those users, yes. Yeah, for those users. Uh, I wonder if more organizations might um, do the Teams collaboration only mode, keep their meetings in Skype for Business, and then sort of graduate uh, after after Teams gain some traction and people get used to it in the organization. Yeah, possibly. I mean, then that and therein lies the challenge. It's like, do you take baby steps and yeah. do that, um, causing possible confusion, um, or do you go right to it and you know pilot a larger group that are uh, in the collab uh, and meetings mode and see how it goes. But obviously, even in, in that group, like unless they're dealing with themselves, there's going to be bound to, bound to be a meeting where a Skype user has to join, which they can, but that, that always causes confusion, you know, especially with large orgs where there's training and th lots of communications have to be updated. So it definitely is something that is going to need to be carefully considered for sure. Yeah, I think the biggest linchpin is that, that, that scheduled meetings, right? Because if you look at even the find time services, like we, we're trying to push all our users to using Teams only. And and the problem is they use these other tools, like on a PM right. side, you use find time to book meetings. And by default, it throws a Skype for business meeting uh, in there. So, and it's not so easy to flip that meeting into a Teams meeting after. So uh, we, we are finding that the booking of meetings is what's causing the problem with the the modes. So that's why I was talking about the meeting migration service, things like find time. Uh, all these things need to be able to flip with the mode, and, and those aren't there today. Yeah, and I, I think Dino actually made me realize a, a really important point here. With all these modes, uh, 
most, if not all of them, can be set per user or per, per tenant, which sounds really great, like you have a lot of power. But uh, if too many people have different experiences, that, that'll be a recipe for mass confusion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's that do you rip the Band-Aid off and uh, force it on the organization to, to lessen the confusion? Or do you, you know, have to choose your pilot groups carefully? Yeah, I mean, with one customer, we're actually piloting – uh, we're in the direct routing tab, and w one line of thought is that we're thinking cut the users over fully, enterprise voice and meeting and everything, so that it's a clean slate for them. They just go to start, they start to use the Teams client for everything. So the key there is, you know, we have to make sure that enterprise voice and all the features that they're used to using is ready in Teams. So that there's another interesting scenario in, in that if that can work for those subset of users, then I think. Arguably, that might actually be the easy, easiest way to go because then it's everything. I'm, I'm not using Skype for one thing and Teams for another. Like that, that could be annoying and confusing for users. Um, you know, I find even with myself, I'm uh, as a direct routing customer uh, in my own tenant. I, I, you know, I'm trying to use leverage the Teams client as much as possible, but then I have to switch back inevitably to Skype for certain things because uh, meetings are scheduled and things like that. So, you know, that's another. That's another. Uh, possible starting point too. Yeah, one of the biggest things for me is the federation, right? It, that's the you know it's one of the features that's that's coming. But I, I think for for me and I know a, a, a few organizations that's one of the features that's holding them back from from fully moving over, right? Because mm -hmm. you still need to be able to have your Skype for Business client in order to communicate with all your federated partners. So it's sort of the either yeah. the uh, in the islands mode, right? Do you think that's going to be the the feature that opens the floodgates, Federation? I don't know. I mean, that's a big one for me. Yeah, um, I think that's a I think that's a, a fairly significant one to be able to just um, not just communicate internally, but external partners and. Uh, mm -hmm. as well. It's it's sort of the biggest barrier for people living only in teens right now. So, or the ones that are stuck in islands mode. I think that's the feature that will tip the scale awesome all right guys uh, well thanks everybody for uh joining in in the session and uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the next episode okay thanks see ya